Hello gamers, I'm wet because I got out of the shower. I went for a nice 2 a.m. run at zero degrees and now it's time for a nice 3 a.m. gaming session. Isn't that right gamers? There ain't nothing better than this. Yes there is, that's a lie. There are better things than this. But right now, that doesn't matter because I've got a few plans. I think for the end game the end game plan here is going to be defeating all of the colony crises so we get to experience all of that and also defeating all of the Omega ships in the sector so that's going to mean both hyper shunts and that's going to mean the unique bounty that you can get once per sector which does mean I'm going to have to build up a military contact at some point in order to do that which normally I don't really engage much with the contact system. I kind of ignore them. So I'm going to have to build somebody up. And that'll be an interesting experience. So for starters, uh, let's not forget to put officers into these omens. The skill sets that they have are uh, not great. Impact mitigation and ballistic mastery are really not what you want to see on an omen. But it also doesn't really matter with coordinated maneuvers and wolf pack tactics. These things are going to provide bonuses just for having officers. They could have useless skills, and they would still be useful. So my next step, before we go grab all of these missions, is going to be a little shopping spree. We've got to buy some stuff, because I want to upgrade these omens. I want to get and blasters on these things, on all of them. And then I'm going to dump some story points into them, because I've got plenty of story points, and I'm a little short on bonus XP. And then what I'm going to do with my flagship, I've been thinking about it for a little bit. I'm going to start, I'm going to grab crew training, and then I'm going to go into the red skills. I'm going to start grabbing these things, because what I want to do is I want to run the Fury. I'm going to go for cybernetic augmentation, because I want to try this. And if, But if I'm going to do that, I need combat skills. And if I'm going to run combat skills, I'm just going to run a ship that's really fun. And my favorite flagships, you might notice a pattern here, are the Shrike the Fury, and the Odyssey. Plasma Burn is just the most fun to use. That's a fact. And I'm sticking to it. So, I'm going to grab Cybernetic Augmentation. Along the way, I do want to grab Electronic Warfare now that they've added the extra range for capturing things. That would be really cool. But if I'm using the Fury, then I want to grab Neural Link so that I can use two of them at the same time and show off how fun that is. It's really like some of the best things are piloting an Odyssey, piloting two Link Furies, and surprisingly, piloting a Shrike in the late game can be really fun if you have the right equipment. Right, if you've got yourself a Cryo Blaster and a Sabo Pod, it can be shockingly effective because you've got this little maneuverable ship that can sneak in beside much larger ships and start blasting away at a hole in their armor. Right, somebody else is going to make the hole for you, and you just blast the, You just position yourself perfectly to get those cryo blaster shots. It's obviously not as effective as using a bigger ship, but it punches way above its weight class and player hands. It's a lot of fun to use. But that's not the direction we're going today. Today, it's going to be Neuralink. I say today as if that's going to happen today. It's probably going to happen in the future. I don't think I'm going to level up that quickly. First, I need to grab enough skills to make that actually doable, because... The Fury with no maneuverability bonuses is going to suck. Right? You, you need Helmsmanship and Impact Mitigation. Even though the reduced armor damage is not very useful, everything else is. 50% maneuverability and reduced weapon and engine damage taken, you're not getting taken out by ion beams nearly as easily. Those shield penetrating arcs are going to screw you over if you don't have this. And the extra maneuverability saves you from needing auxiliary thrusters. Although you can stack auxiliary thrusters too. And that could be interesting. Okay. So, shopping spree time. I guess first things first. I picked up my missions here. I want to go activate that colony that's way out here. Which requires me to go talk to the hegemony. Hey guys, what's up? You're an officer, I can hire you. Ah, Ballistic Mastery, of course. So, I think that there's a limited number of officers that can be generated at any given time. I think that's how it works. 
I don't know this. I just feel like it's true. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hire you because it's only 4,000 credits, very cheap. And then I'm going to immediately fire you because I have no use for you. Yeah, bye. See ya. Dumbass. Next time, try spawning in with better skills, okay? Have you thought about that? All right. There's a lost fringe colony, Sentinel, that you ought to know about. Gain some reputation. I'm not even trying to get reputation with the hegemony. You just start with 15 for free, and then you get a bunch for free with this. Some money. Very cool. So now that colony out there is an active colony. Which, as far as I know, is the only way to get the vanilla factions to expand right now. This... That's the only way I know of. You know, everybody loves Nexarilin, but having a way to get new colonies for the factions in vanilla is kind of cool. Even if it's only a one-time thing. Yeah, I'm just going to sell you a bunch of crap that I don't need. I really don't think I need that many heavy machinery. We're going to go with 100. We're going to keep 100. Yeah, I think this is a good idea. Okay. So now we're going to go hit Tritac. That's a nice fuel range. And we're going to start looking. We're going to start looking. Luckily, Furies aren't too hard to find. I'm pretty sure I hit e, uh, right click there. There we go. Furies aren't too hard to find being a light cruiser. And they're not going to slow us down at all because it's going to be burn 9 with navigation. We're still going to have max speed. That's part of what makes the Eradicator and the Fury... Well, I guess the Fury's not great on its own. It's great if you pilot it with some piloting skills. Yeah, what I'm trying to get at here is... The light cruisers are a really important spot in this game. Because they give you that burn 9. Which means they don't slow you down if you have navigation. That's a really important spot to be at. And, the, right, you know, normally you need to have destroyers to get that. So it's a size up. You're going up an entire size class without losing any speed. So those fast cruisers are really important. The problem is that, you know, Falcons are really light, being only 14 DP. They're not super strong. Even if you mass up a lot of them, they're, they're, they're wonky, right? They definitely have their uses, but they're kind of wonky. All right, do you guys have any AM blasters? No, you don't have anything. What? Okay. Oh, you do have this. That's going to be useful. Right, so Falcons have their uses, but they're a bit niche. Uh, the Fury is fun to pilot. It's effective as a pilot, but it's not great for the AI. So that's kind of part of why the Eradicator is really popular, and probably part of why it got nerfed, is because it is good with the AI, actually. It's really good. You know, right? unlike the other two, you can just kind of slap it in your fleet and it's going to perform well and it's not going to slow you down at all. Now, I'm, I'm not going to do all of them because you want to do an even number with Tritachion. Right? See, so I'm getting four reputation points. If I take this off, it goes down to three. But if I add that ninth one, it doesn't do anything, right? There's no half points of reputation, right? I can live without getting the 30,000 right now. Yeah, I don't have enough current standing is a negative two and that's after just increasing it yeah it's fine it's fine it's a non-issue actually I need to I'm gonna need to do a hegemony contract anyways so that I can get past those sentinel fleet because I'm not gonna be fighting that anytime soon I'm sure if you did some crazy build yeah I guess I'll grab this I'm sure if you do some crazy build with the right player skills, you could just rush down those fleets and defeat them on your own. But there's not really any need to do that. Okay. What do I have on the other one? Oh, nothing. Just that. Alright. All right, what am I going to call you? Oh, I actually have a few ships that I haven't named. I can give you that... We'll call you. Asgard is kind of a cool name. Night Runner. Not bad. I'll accept those. Let's see what we've got. Externality. Dwam Mutef. I mean, clearly this is a very dangerous ship, so we're going to call it Chariot of Destruction. Uh, 
I'm going to capitalize the D. Very cool. Right now, the enemy knows that this isn't just a this is not just an exploration ship. That's a it's a war crime ship. Okay, this is going to be called Hacker's Paradise. Probably more appropriate as an omen name, but and it's just something I thought of. Let's see. Externality. We're going to call you the Negotiator. Which would be a cool name if you were a combat ship. But you're not, so... It's just very literal rather than being sarcastic. Okay, and since I've got those extra story points, I'm going to slap on Flux Coil Adjunct. S mod that. Get as much capacity as we can squeeze out of these things. Which is part of why Flux Regulation works really well with frigates. This is part of why. Because those extra five capacitors you can put on them make a big difference for frigates. That's an extra thousand capacity. I mean, even for a ship like this, that's about 20% extra. That's nothing to joke around with. Alright, these are going to be a little awkward. Because of... yeah. You guys got it right. I'm at the same place. No, you don't. Well, hopefully the next place has something. No, that's the wrong place. We're going to e Brasil. It's a lot like Brazil, but it's E. There's an H in there, but I'm not pronouncing it. I don't know, it just feels right that way. Let's see, let's grab more of this. Okay. Everybody's favorite part of the game, shopping. This is so ex oh, We can add that to the mission list. Right, and that's another thing I want to get to, is the mothership. But that shouldn't be too hard. That shouldn't be too hard with a bunch of omens and just kind of anything as the flagship, really. Oh, I can recover this. I mean, speaking of the mothership, Sunders are really good for that specific situation. Sunders destroy those derelicts. You just give it a high-intensity laser, they're gone. It's going to be over. It's going to be more Jover than it's ever been. I'm going to grab both of those. Thank you. That's what I like to see. Of course, you haven't got a high-intensity laser. That's that's fine. This is fine. Because I did get a Pristine Fury. That was 140 Yeah, it's about the same price. 2D mods on the open market is about the same price as the black market. That is, That is the way it is. I think I'm going to put you down here. I'm going to need more crew. Nope, that is the wrong button. Let's just buy a bunch of them. So I've been told that the spacer's debt actually scales off your level, which kind of makes sense. Oh, perfect. Thank you. That makes sense. But also, I've been told that it never goes away, which is a little weird. It's just forever. It's a forever debt. And you must have real... Like, Paul Bingus, what what did you do to get a debt forever? Yeah, he's not going to explain himself. Of course, now he's going to clam up. You never, tr never trust a guy like Paul. Really. Okay, I really want Sabos here. I really want Sabos here. I want a Heavy Blaster, which is hopefully going to get replaced by a Cryo Blaster when I get the Weapon Cache. Then I want a Sable Pod. Probably a... Uh, well, I guess it depends on what we're fighting. For most of the game, having a Reaper here is good. But against Remnants, you're probably going to want a second Sable Pod. And that being said, having some nice things like Hardened Shields and ECCM Package is very cool. I probably in the end game going to S mod solar shielding on everything. That's probably the direction we're going. Because that would mean we could just fly through black holes like it's nothing. It's it's a sight to behold, really. Just passing through black holes like they ain't even there. 
Well, I mean, you still get sucked in, but that doesn't really matter. You're just not losing any supplies. And then, if, of course, if you have containment procedures as well, then when you use emergency burn, it no longer reduces combat readiness. So you're only spending a little bit of fuel. It's pretty... Right? Having free emer emergency burns not burning your combat readiness and having complete immunity to hazards. You just kind of fly around and it's it's great. Uh, Sabos are good. Do I have enough ordnance points to make this work? Hmm. Actually, I've got plenty of ordnance points. All oh, right, I'm thinking because normally you have to spend a bunch of points on. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Of. Normally, I would spend a bunch of points on advanced optics, but I'm not doing that yet because I, that's not something I can do yet. ECM package is probably a good choice. Get those sabos in more accurately. All right, I could be using these, but is it really any point? If anything, I would probably put ion cannons in these slots just for a little consistent EMP damage. But other than that, auto pulse plus light needlers plus sabos is a pretty good setup. Uh, do any of you lads want to pilot this thing? Probably this one. Yeah, missile spec. The ballistic mastery is actually getting used. There you go. That'll be fine. I'm going to pilot this thing. It's not going to be very good, though, without any skills or equipment. Yeah, I need to find more. I'm going to need another antimatter blaster. But that's fine. Tri the other TriTac colony should have something. Probably. They're probably going to have something. Also want to start looking for a place to colonize very soon. Start unclaimed. Sort of like this. This place. This is way out here. Oh, so this must be something that I got survey data from some random ship. That must be why I can see that. That being said, this one's also pretty tempting. 75% hazard. Oh yeah, this system is really quite good. No gate, but that's okay. We can fix that nowadays. Right? We've got new technology. Just need to make sure... Yeah, we This is actually really good. Wow, wait, hold on. This is... This here is really good because a mining setup will get all kinds of ores and volatiles. You don't even need to colonize the gas giant. Don't bother. You're getting your volatiles here anyways. They're in small amounts, but that should be enough. Regardless. And then the no atmosphere lets you do the catalytic core and synchrotron core if I find those. And then the boosted accessibility from this. That's pretty good. Okay. Yeah, I'll probably colonize this system. Although, it is really far. So that kind of hurts. So far, it looks like all of the planets are really far. Hurts accessibility, but it does mean that uh, enemy fleets should take longer to get to us. Which is going to be relevant. It's going to be relevant with the new colony crisis. Okay. Repair. And I, we're going to explore the other one here. Nope. Didn't mean to do that. Alright, what you got? No officers, cool. Such a scarce scarce resource. They're a rare breed. Tachyon. Hmm. I'll buy both of them. Let's slap that on. I do also want to try the new uh, what's it called? Oh, I'm gonna need more vents here. I do also want to try the new thingy. Storm Needler. The way they've changed the Storm Needler. I want to give that a shot. Just not sure what ship I'm going to put that on yet. <sighs> yeah. Alright. So we're going to put those back there. And I guess I'm just going to put a third antimatter blaster for now. Sabo pot. Perfect. That is exactly what I need. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
You know, I could have just ripped it off this thing. Now that I think about it, yeah. I should have switched this for a harpoon pod and then ripped that off. Now I could just rip it off now. That's fine. It's fine. It's a non-issue. Alright, you're going to go with that. And that's just going to stay empty for now. And we want to link these together. Perfect. And I'm interested in this, because you do get easier access to the zero flux boost with Hounds and Ship. So if I S mod this, that increases the zero flux boost. I'm not planning to put safety overrides on this thing. I'm not... You know, actually, I don't think I need a targeting unit. That's Yeah, normally I build it with unstable injectors. That's right. And I don't bother with a targeting unit. And you're going to think, well, if it's that short range anyways, why not get safety overrides? Really just because it lets you last longer. And safety overrides cost a lot of ordinance points. And I don't really need the flux dissipation that badly. Once you get a cryoblaster here, I mean, you're looking at two antimatter blasters plus a cryoblaster... You're already doing fine. You don't need that extra dissipation. The extra speed is nice, but again, it's also not necessary with the right setup. So I am interested in this. A couple of story points. Yeah, let's do that. Let's experiment a little bit. Do still need something like a heavy blaster for here as a temporary fill. I'm going to need energy weapon mastery to make this really good. Okay. So that's what we got for now. What have you got? You got another Fury. Interesting. So I don't have Neuralink, and I'm not going to have it for a while, which means I'm, I'm really not going to buy this. I'm not going to buy this, because I, I'm just going to be lugging it around, and it's not going to be very useful without, without me piloting it. Now, the Eradicator's more tempting, but honestly, I would rather have a Manticore right now Maybe throw a Storm Leader on it. Probably not the best way to use a Manticore, but it'd be interesting. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm going to buy that Atlas. Alright. We're going to need... It's a good thing I got this, because otherwise I would have to pass up on this thing. Yeah, let's get some extra vision range so we don't get ambushed. That would be cool. And this thing's going to be at a solid 10 burn. Thanks to dry field plus the, ex plus the bulk transport. Although that's actually a little bit too fast because I've got navigation anyway. So it would be fine if it was just the 9. It would be fine if I built this in and I dropped this skill. Which I will at some point. Now the question is, do I need extra fuel capacity? Because there's a Prometheus sitting there. It's begging to be used. Yeah, I'm willing to waste a bit of money on tax to get this over with faster. I am. I am going to pay for convenience. And nobody can stop me. In structural damage, that really doesn't matter. Uh, no, I don't think I need extra fuel capacity. I think we're good, actually. As a matter of fact, I think we're doing just fine. And no amount of logic or reason will convince me otherwise. Oh yeah, there it is. Now it's popped up. Size 3. It's about a thousand people living here for who knows how long. Poor guys. Okay. I'm sitting on probably more cash than I really need to hold on to. But I don't really want too many smaller ships. Do I have any good equipment for this? That's immediately available. No, not really. Okay, so I'm just going to go looking for... I'm going to go looking for a weapon. You guys got a heavy blaster. I don't think any of them have had a... Yeah, yeah. yeah they didn't even bother me. Look at that. Things are getting so much better. I'm going to grab a hegemony... Oh, minus one. Wow. They're really mad, guys. They're so angry. 10k. For level four. That's... Ex uh. If it scales with level, that's pretty expensive. Considering level 1 is a thousand credits. 
All right, I'm gonna need to look around for this because I am. I'm not gonna do the triple antimatter blaster. That's a joke. That's a. That's a funny haha. -ha. It's a. I, I'm just putting it there in case we run into some pirates in the core worlds. I'm not actually gonna use that. It's kind of in the right direction, but. Yeah, no, I don't want to go that far, of course. That's in the opposite direction. And some distance away from the center. Yeah, I don't think so. Hi. Bye. It's another fun astronomy fact. Uh, for, of all the exoplanets we've detected, the interesting thing is, uh, they kind of split up almost evenly into three categories. No, I'm not establishing a cap. No. They split up almost evenly into three categories. Uh, rocky planets, ice planets, you know, like Neptune, and gas giants. It's, a, it's around 30 to 35% for each of those categories. Uh, what's interesting is that m the ice planets tend to be smaller than Neptune, right? So they're, they're usually referred to as mini-Neptunes. I don't really need this, but I'm going to grab it. Whereas the rocky planets tend to be larger than Earth. They're referred to as super-Earths. Like, they're a lot bigger, usually. But that could also be because it's just a lot easier to detect bigger planets. There might be tons of smaller rocky planets out there, like Mercury. But we wouldn't know, because they're going to be really hard to find by in comparison. Okay. Yeah, you guys don't have anything. I feel... I, I doubt the Persian League is going to have anything either, because they're very much the midline faction who favors beam weapons in their energy slots anyways. I doubt they're going to have a heavy blaster. If anything, it's going to be the hegemony who, po who just pops up and goes, Yay, you want a heavy blaster? Because for some reason, they tend to have those. And it's a, it's a real mystery why the hegemony of all people would be the best source for heavy blasters. I guess, do they want it for their eagles? Like, like, what's going on there? There's a lot of questions, not a lot of answers. Let's slap that on everything. Efficiency overall is just going to make life that little bit easier. Actually, I could S mod this. Because I am probably, it is an atlas, I'm probably going to keep it around for a while. I think I'll hold on to two points, though. Just to just have a little buffer, so even if I use one, then I've still got one left in the tank. You want to get out of a tight situation. Right? This is, this is your plot armor. Don't throw away your plot armor. You're going to regret it. Especially when you actually have something to lose. Alright, let's get out of here. Somebody's gonna have a heavy blaster. Sindria, come on. Sindria's gonna have something. Wait, let me check for officers. Nope. Hey, you guys, if you're not gonna give me what I need, then I'm gonna run out of time for these missions. Which, that would just be rude. So, stop not having what I need. Can I send in an order ahead of time? Like, hey guys, I need, I need this. I'll pay a premium for it, I promise. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything. Yeah, I guess a pulse laser is fine. Okay. We're gonna go with the pulse laser. Oh, I should probably grab a few things here. So, missile racks. Very expensive. Yes. I don't mind the lowered fi rate of fire. It's going to be fine. Right? It's more about burst damage here. And then I want frontal shield conversion. So I don't have to manage an omni shield while I'm piloting this thing. 
There we go. And now I want to level up so that I can get some skills and actually use this thing. That would be cool. Let's move you forward a bit. I was going to say Osiris is, but that's kind of uh, it's kind of awkward looking. <laughs> that's a that's a dumb name. Let's go with that. Osiris's tablespoon. You know, it could have been something. It could have been like a dangerous sounding. You know, you want it's it's like Sun Tzu said. You want to appear weak when you are strong, and strong when you are weak. So naturally, I forgot to check for an officer. This is fine. I will just find them. And there will be no issues. Yeah, I'm going to hold on to quite a bit of cash. Cash can disappear very quickly, especially when you're in debt. Oh, wait, hold on. Hold up. We do need to stop and get that commission. Which should make cash disappear a little less quickly. So I do want to grab this, because the problem is, even if you, even if you set it up as important, if you don't grab it, it's going to disappear. So there is a mining station out there. I'm not going to remember that. It's it's gone. I, I've already forgotten. Okay, these are all clustered around that spot. They really want me to go back near Sentinel. They really want me to do that. Which, to be fair, is not a bad strategy. Picking up missions that just pop up around Sentinel is not a bad strategy because you have a place to refuel and resupply, but they're still going to pay out the big bucks because it's so far from the core world. Okay. Yep, going to grab that. Do you guys have a heavy blaster? No. I mean, what a heavy? What even is that? Those don't exist. It's fiction. We made it up. All right, let's go with this. This is acceptable. Okay, let's grab that commission. Currently only hostile to Ludic Path and Pirates. Cool. That is good. I don't want to be hostile if I don't have to. Uh, that's not important. Don't star that. It defaults it to being an important thing. Uh, I don't know why. And I think it said 40,000? What was that? I've tried playing the game where I reduced the faction, the passive commission by 90%, you know, just take a zero off the end, and increase the amount you get for doing stuff, which, yeah, it definitely makes the game grindier. That's kind of the thing, is trying to, trying to play around with the, uh, the economics to make it more difficult doesn't really make it more difficult, it just makes it grindier. That's, uh... Difficulty in this game is kind of different from that. Let's just learn those. Okay, so it should be hard of the system. So if I just spin around here. Eighteen thousand. Let's have a look. Commission I got eight thousand because I was only commissioned for the last few days. Yeah. That's heart of the system, really? That is the furthest heart of the system I've ever seen. They're normally right next to the sun. 48 crew just kind of popped out of there. I guess it is a mud skipper. It could actually be holding that many people. No planets, but two stable points. Interesting. Interesting, but not particularly useful. I can't wait for the day that I'm just riding through these storms for free. With my S modded solar shielding. I mean, first I have to unlock solar shielding, and then I'm going to have to spend a lot of story points to do it. And then the combat, I mean, in terms of combat effectiveness, it's really not great to do that. But overall combat effectiveness should be fine anyways. I mean, 
Especially with that 10% reduced energy damage. I can't believe for so long it was 20%. 20%, that's just crazy. Like, oh wow, that's, that's pretty good. It's They've always got high gravity on gas giants, so at a minimum, that's going to be there. But they usually have like one, two, sometimes three or four extra hazards on top of that. So just heavy gravity is pretty good. And then plus one volatiles. Nice. Okay. Survey that. So I want to pulse again. Yep, there's something over here. Okay. Oh. Ooh, that is tempting. Let's see. Yeah, it's even up to nine because of... I don't normally use these. They're very fragile, and it makes me very nervous. But that being said, it would be a shame not to use this opportunity. It's even only got one demon, compromised armor. That doesn't matter. What is this? What is and this is going to be interesting. I don't really want to spend the supplies to get that going. Yeah, there's something over here. It's not going to be useful until I get back and kit it out. Probably going to need an officer. It could be interesting. It's definitely got... It's like destroyer level... Well, I mean, maybe I should give it a bit more credit. It's... Well, you know, I would say it's destroyer level durability, actually. Uh, it's, it's probably its numbers are bigger, but it's big and slow, which makes it overall about as tough as a destroyer. But it's got capital level firepower. It's a very unique ship in that way. I mean, this, I don't think there's anything else with large ballistics and accelerated ammo feeder. I think that's a unique thing that it has. There's nothing else that has both of those things. And then it's also got two large missiles. It's, it's a very unique ship. I do like how everything gets muffled when you're in these clouds. Actually, abyssal hyperspace is kind of the same. Well, not abyss. Yeah, abyssal, right? There's deep hyperspace, which is these clouds. And then you've got abyssal hyperspace, which is, well, we'll see eventually. I do plan on going there. It's only 10, that's fine. It's a jungle world. What do we got in this system? So no gate, but there's a lot of planets. Hey, there it is. That's what we like to see. Yeah, I do have an atlas now. I'm just gonna grab everything, even, even the food. Even the food. Now that I've got more supplies, I can do that. You know, I'm kind of out of habit just go clicking alt and hovering over all of them when I don't really need to do that. I could just click R. Force of habit. Alright. Yeah, basically nothing because it's an old debris field. That's the way that it is. Oh no, I'm not going to be able to get back. Whatever will I do? Just kidding, I'm going to dive into every system and search around for stuff. That should give me enough fuel. And that should do it. And if not, you've got an emergency beacon for a reason. Alright, make use of it. Don't let it go to waste. There we go. Now, now I'm going to start pressing R. I'm learning. Hmm. Can't wait for the combat to start, though. That's when things get interesting. You can do some... Like, stacking up maneuverability in a ship that's already fast lets you do some really interesting things. For a while, I thought that maneuverability was just turn rate. It's not. It's so much more than turn rate. It's also your acceleration. Because, as it turns out, anything that boosts top speed 
just boosts top speed and that's it. It does no effect on your acceleration. But maneuverability, that boosts your acceleration. So getting 100% from stacking a couple things is actually a really big, really big change in your ship's performance. I'm gonna have to scan this. Survey that. There we go. How's my fuel looking? Getting a little closer. Okay, what systems do I want to stop by on the way back? I guess I'll stop by this red giant. Maybe drop in with this black hole. And then if I don't have enough fuel then I can drop by some of these. I'm gonna try and take the straightest path back. Don't want to zigzag too much and waste fuel. The fuel that you find is zigzagging. That would be a little bit of a problem. And what do we got here? 63%. Okay. And we can save time by using transverse jump. I think... I've been thinking about it because transverse jump burns a little bit of your ship's CR. So you have to spend supplies to recover that. But then you also save the maintenance supplies that you would have had to spend on your way back to the jump point. So I'm wondering where the diff where the line is between when that's more efficient and when it's less efficient. I kind of go off of gut feeling. But I don't know what the math would be on that. All right, let's get this nav buoy. I got plenty of heavy machinery. And even though this is not really doing anything for me. Although, I have to say, when you're in a remnant system, even if you think you've got, oh, I've had sustained burn at 20, I don't need the nav buoy. When you're in a remnant system, you're going to want to grab it. And the reason for that is, a lot of the time, you actually want to turn off... This is... Hello. I could put a military base here. Fuel. Re I could put mining to grab these. Fuel refining, metal refining, and a military base. This could be interesting. <sighs> That's filled up everything. That is... Wow. All right, I'm not... No. None of that. I found an alpha core. That's pretty cool. Right, what I was saying about being in a red zone. What you want to do is you want to turn this off to reduce your signature. But if you do that and the remnants are about the same speed as you, you're going to run into problems. So getting that nav buoy, even though it's sustained burn isn't very useful, it still is useful to get that. Yeah, I guess I'll do this one first. It still is useful to do that. Because it just lets you it lets you outrun them while having your your overcapacity. Hold on. Uh, no, not that. We're gonna dump food. We're gonna dump all the food actually. I don't need food. Yeah, and this it's similar thing with the nav with the uh, sensor array. Right, you, that's also really useful, because it lets you see them bef in, before they see you. So you can stay out of their way easier. Which is really... Which makes it kind of useful that in most remnant systems, well, at least most red zones, you're going to find at least one of them. You're going to find at least either one of a nav buoy or a sensor thing. Because grabbing those makes it a lot easier to avoid detection and just go around looting even though you're not quite ready to fight them. Or if the Academy sent you there, because sometimes they like to do a little trolling. Oh, right, there was another mission that I forgot about, I guess. And I also don't really have... This is going to burn my fuel even more. Heart of the system. Okay, so we can find that really quickly. Yeah, we're going to be on time. It's fine. We just need to find a slipstream on the way back. We'll be fine. See, look, there's... Look, I set it, and there it is. And it's kind of in an awkward spot, but so be it. All right, we're going to drop right in here. I don't want to waste any time. 
Yep, there it is. Open the pods. We got organs, baby. Alright, what have we got in this system? It better be fuel. Let me find a derelict Prometheus, please. Habitat? Marines? Okay. It's not a lot of fuel, but I'll take it. Alright. And habitats... Of all the loot pinatas, habitats are kind of the most disappointing. Alright, that's a lot of stuff. Oh, that's actually a fleet. I thought for a second that there would be more loot up there. Okay, please have fuel. Nope. I was hoping that the DRAM would have a lot of fuel because it was recoverable without a story point. And sometimes that is the case, but nope, not this time. Seven crew. Ah, uh, no. I'm not going to be doing the Medusas today. Although spamming Medusas can be quite good. You don't really even need frigates, just because, you know, you give them systems expertise and helmsmanship. They're going to be... They're, they're, they're mo more mobile than a lot of frigates in the game at that point. So they can do your point capturing. You can just get, like, ten of them with... Ten Medusas with officers is a force to be reckoned with. That's for sure. And let's do a little exploring. Somebody's following me. Or is that like a sensor ghost in system? Alright, let's have a look. This is an interesting place. Probably not going to be colonizing here, though. Did I just get 300 marine? What was that? Or was that 300 crew? Am I seeing things right? Or am I just making that... No, I must have seen... No, yeah, there it is. 300 crew. And it looks like it filled it up. There's no way that it exactly had the right amount of crew for me. It must be the case that when you find crew, the number just gets toned down to the so that it doesn't go over your limit. That must be the case, because there's no way they had exactly the right amount to fill up my, car, my crew capacity. That's just ridiculous. Okay, so they are just fall. Uh, you want to die? I guess not. Uh, too late, though. You've got my attention. You've got my attention now. It's over. Oh yeah, this feels pretty good to pilot. With those auxiliary thrusters and helmsmanship. Whew. We're, we're zooming. If this was a cryoblaster, they would already be dead. If this was a heavy blaster, they would already be dead. Pulse lasers just... Not really what I want. Devastators. That's very interesting. Yeah, you can't stop that now, can you? Bye bye. We will be seeing you never. Fuel. 53. Alright. That's not terrible. That's very okay. That's probably... Yeah, that was worth fighting them. Unidentified. Or is that just a cargo pod I left behind? Yes, it is. Alright, that's less interesting. Let's get out of here. So I think we're going to go to this one up here. And try to ride that. Yeah, look. Fuel range. We're good. We just collected enough fuel, and now we're fine. It's as simple as that. 
We even went in the wrong direction and we managed to collect an, enough fuel for this. You know, you, opportunities are there, you just gotta look for them. You know, play a little risky. Now give me, give me topography. Give me topography. Don't eject me. Give me topography. There we go. How close are we? Yeah, there we go. This is just perfect. This this is a this is exactly the slip and slide I needed. I mean, I kind of passed that black hole, which would have been nice to scan, but... Oh, well, this is better. Okay. So, from here... I think I'm going to drop this off at... Is it Corvus? Yeah. You can drop this off at the abandoned terraforming platform. Ow. Yeah, now we're at war with the church. That's fine. I don't really go to church space anyways, because they don't have too much that's interesting to me. I also don't do system bounties very much, although I hear they're a good way to farm reputation. Which can sometimes be important. I have to click bounties. Who are, who's offering these? Independent, hegemony... Hegemony. I mean, I'm already fine with hegemony reputation. I don't need to farm that. I'll go to Jingala first. Gotta sell a bunch of stuff. Let's see. Officer. Nope. They're a rare breed, I tell you. You can sell all this survey data, all this crap that I don't need. All this crap that I don't need. You know, it'd be more efficient to go look... Well, not more efficient, but more profitable to go looking for the best place to sell all this crap. Uh, but I don't want to. So I'm not going to. Okay. Uh, do you guys have anything that I want or need? Don't think so. Could buy a uh, Prometheus, but I think I'm good. Got a lot of credits. All right, of course I got to sell these blueprints. Probably gonna start a colony soon enough. I guess to do that though, I would need to check out this system. Really, this is class five. Poor light, extreme weather, high gravity. I, I think I'm gonna pass. Yeah, I think I'm gonna pass. This is up in there. Yeah, really. I think I'm just. I think I would do this one. I mean, it is far out, but it's also right next to. Well, not right next, but it's relatively close to Sentinel. So that sh that would boost the accessibility. I think. I think that would boost it enough that it's probably worth it. Will be relatively safe. And Sentinel's definitely not launching any expeditions. <clears throat> so it'd be relatively safe from Core World stuff. And maybe, yeah, that's a good plan. I like that plan. Okay. So that being said, maybe I should buy some extra ships to get extra crew capacity. Not here, though. There's nothing I really need here. I'm gonna drop some stuff off. Do I want to drop that off here or no? I should drop it off at whatever colony I'm about to start. And then whatever challenges we face, we'll just deal with them when we get to them. What are we hostile to? We're hostile to everybody. Oh, okay. So we're at war with Tritachion and the church at the same time. Cool. 
Maybe Scathy's got what I'm looking for. Any interesting bounties? That's another good question. Because these are the way you get XP. This is bounties. Actually, I think... You know what? I'm just going to go straight for the uh, weapons cache and have a look at that. That's a lot of pirate fleets. Oh, you guys are not... You guys don't want to mess with me. You should see what happened to the last pirate fleet. You guys are not big enough to take this on. So it looks like I've unlocked reverse polarity at some point. Uh, I don't remember doing that, actually. As a matter of fact... What was here before? Oh, I see. Salvage gets replaced with reversal polarity. That makes a lot of sense because you can't salvage in hyperspace. And now it automatically toggles between... Yeah, that, that makes perfect sense that that would do that. Because now that it automatically toggles your hotbar between the... the default for normal space and then this one for hyperspace. So you can't use scavenging in hyperspace and you can't use reverse polarity because there's no slipstreams in normal space. It makes so much sense, it's frightening. Okay, I, I should be paying attention. Gotta look for this little spot of purple. In this region. There it is. Alright, let's hop in here. It should be right about here. The interesting thing is, if you're not on the quest line, you actually can't do anything with that venture. Because it belongs to somebody. You, you just can't do anything with it. Yeah, it's a little... There's a few things like that that annoy me about the game. Like, you know, quest, you know, planets with important quests you can't blow up. It's like, if you're going to give people the option to blow up the planets in the first place, why would you then stop them for like story important planets but then once you've completed the quests that are relevant to that planet then you can blow them up it's like okay well hold on if I'm going to blow up the planet I want to be able to lock myself out of the content I get it you're trying to preserve the content but the reality is if a player's going around bombing planets recklessly and they accidentally sever a quest line I think that's a fair consequence really I mean they're bombing everybody the, the fact that you can even finish the main quest after becoming a war criminal wanted by the entire galaxy doesn't even make sense in a lot of ways. I probably don't even need to go in myself, but I am. Oh man, I can't wait for systems expertise. The extra shield efficiency, well, it's not just shield efficiency, but reduced damage taken across the board. Mm, that's going to be good. Yeah, the only reason you do have to be a little careful with these things is because they have alpha cores. And the way that uh, it drops scale is that obviously, as you might expect, rarer cores have lower drop rates. So, uh, so if something has a, ga a gamma core, that's more likely to drop than something that has a beta core, and the beta core is more likely to drop than something that has an alpha core. But it also scales off of ship size. The larger the ship increases the drop rate. So an alpha core in a frigate is very unlikely to drop, but an alpha core in a radiant is a lot more likely to drop. Oh, of course. I get the disintegrator, the one that you couldn't just get me lucky. You couldn't just you can you can just give me the one that I wanted. All right, that's fine. I'm not going to get a cryo blaster until after I start killing the tesseracts, which is not going to be for a while now. Yeah, I could go back there at some point, maybe salvage that paragon. Does mean I can kind of bypass. Yeah, I'll probably do that later though. Later? Why not now? I think is there a good reason I shouldn't just do that now. I've got lots of cash. I could just and consider. Yeah, no, I should just do that now. I've got the, I've got plenty of, pl 
plenty of omens. I've got a flagship that I can pilot around for fun. I could just slap in... Uh, I mean, I, I need equipment for it, sure. But, which... Okay, so we're not at war with the Persian League, so I'm going to stop by there instead. Right, I was defaulting to Tritachion, but that's not safe right now. As a matter of fact, I'd call it dangerous. Uh, no. No, I need something that does hard flux. I was thinking about using the phase lance, but I'm not going to. I mean, I already have some, as a matter of fact. So I'm going to go recover that Paragon. I should have... Yeah, I've got story points for it. Yeah, it's going to get more expensive to be running the fleet now, especially without any industry skills. That's when you start to get... We're just hitting the point where it's getting a little concerning. Because just just running with, like, your flagship plus a bunch of frigates is can punch above its weight class and run very efficiently. So I don't think you want to have all of these. I really don't. Do I not have any Vulcans? Damn. That's it. It's the Vulcans that you've got. Huh. That is interesting. Yeah, I don't really have the equipment for this. I think I'm going to leave that mothballed for now. <laughs> no officers. I, it's going to be a bit of a broken record here. That's crazy. It's crazy how there's no officers. Alright, do you have anything interesting? Uh, I, I could buy a bunch of Vulcans, but I don't think that's going to be necessary. Yeah, no, we're fine. Thank you. Probably not going to need that. No, I did arm stealer. So this is the his. Is this the historian? Yeah. A rogue archaeologist uncovering the history of this sector despite the danger of this exceptional era. In the course of my studies, I offered a chance upon hints about where certain pieces of technology might be found. Retrieving those artifacts is, naturally, your role in our arrangement. Only if you're interested, of course. But I've done my research on your exploits, and I'm sure that you will be interested. Don't look pleased with yourself. You don't know me. They don't know me, son. I don't think I need that blueprint. Yeah. Something interesting. Alright. Yeah, I think we'll... Uh, you know, nice to see you. It's good to know you exist. Not particularly what I'm looking for right now. Let me just... Uh, okay, so yeah, this does work like that. It's nice that there's... It's nice that they let you pay for storage at the colonies. But there's also just free places where you can store stuff. There's also just that. Speaking of, I believe I stored a lot of stuff out here. So... You know, I'm just gonna buy a bunch of fuel. I'm gonna buy some crew storage. I'd rather get mud skippers if possible than nebula, but... All right, I'll grab the nebula. All right, you could just grabbing like five mud skippers gives you more crew capacity than a nebula, and it's cheaper by it's like it's like twenty percent of the cost. It's way cheaper. And we're gonna go with yeah. I'm just gonna do that. Okay, and this I'm gonna build this in now. All right, let's get unstable injectors so you know I can get another that's right now that I built that in I can get another one of these I do have solar shielding now 
I actually don't remember grabbing that, but that's really good, as it turns out. I think first I'm going to do engine assembly, just to get that profile down a bit. And I think we're going to start slapping this on things. I only have three left. Ooh. Yeah. No, okay. I'm not going to build it in just yet, but soon. Soon enough, we'll be doing that. So I want fuel. I'll buy, I'll pay the, whatever, it's fine. I'm just grabbing this Paragon and then we're going to be going, actually, before we leave, I also want that extra crew so I can colonize. That's what we're doing. Salvage. Here we go. All right, this is, I think I was considering, yeah, I need to survey these systems. This might actually be a better place to colonize. It's already got a gate. I just need to survey it to see if the stuff, if, it's, if the planets are worth it. You know, pirate activity is a little crazy this time of year. And look at that, we're even in the green. That commission is worth a lot more than that obligation. Looks like we're about a year and a half into this campaign. Actually, I wonder if somebody's... I know if people have speedrun Star Sector, but I'm wondering... Has anybody speedrun killing the Tesseracts? Like, what's the most efficient route to kill those things? Is it getting a couple of uh, onslaughts and min-maxing your skills for them? Is it some afflictor cheese? I do believe somebody showed that you can cheese them into kind of killing each other with a phase ship. Maybe that got patched. I don't know. I'd be interested in finding... It. Okay, there's a... There's a... Yeah. That would be a problem if I was going to colonize here. Then again, I probably have... At this point, I think I have the tools to deal with a pirate base. As long as it's not a big one. It's another debris field. All right. So, how many planets are there? Just there's four. Okay. I didn't see the blue one. I was I knew there was f I felt like yeah, there was four, but I only saw the three. Which if you're having trouble finding one cuz sometimes like these little tiny ones can get hidden in asteroid fields, just hit 3. It'll give these little exploration icons that should reveal it for you. Okay, what? Yeah, we're gonna recover that. Oh boy, oh, and it came with two tachyolances. Very cool. Actually, I don't really want to send this into combat too much. Maybe I should move you. Yeah, you would do well on the Paragon. Out of all the guys that I've got, you're the best guy for that. Let's see. Hmm. So we've got double Tachyon Lance. I feel like this is backwards. You should have the Tachyons in the turrets. And the Plasmas at the front so they can shoot a little bit further. And the Tachyons are great for popping frigates. So you want them in the turrets. I feel like that's a little backwards, but there's a lot of things. I mean, it's got the heavy needlers, so that's very nice. I uh, probably don't need an ion beam. Well, we've already got tack lances. Now let's strip this down. It'd be cool if I had. Uh, it's not symmetrical. This is. This is pain. That's. Uh, this is. Tortures my soul. But we're just going to have to live with it. I don't really have the missiles to do what I want to do with it. So we're just going to have to throw some random crap on here. Yeah, let's go with that. I did get a shock repeater, but only one, of course. What? That was weird. Alright, let's continue. I guess I'll just put these with point defense for now. 
Hopefully I can find more equipment to fill this out when I get back. Even without Tritachian's help. Well, I guess I could just sneak up on him. I'm sure they wouldn't mind the little business. Who cares if we're enemies? It's not a big deal. Money is money. Isn't that right, Tritachion? Yeah, they're li uh, yeah because of course, as you might know, uh, the little tripod that you've got that keeps track of everything—that's the Tritachion logo. They're definitely ta they're, you know, <laughs> people worry about in real life the government tapping into their phones. With Tritachion, I mean. What? The the amount of data collection would be criminal, really. They are... Let's not put any faith in their ethics board, restraining them in that regard. Let's, let's not do that. Okay, I think I've got most of what I want. S-modding a repair unit is really good, even on a ship like this. Probably gonna pass, though. Yeah. S-mod stabilized shield, S-mod turn. I mean, I do want to S-mod the distributor, but probably going to have to do turret gyros just because it's still really good. Uh, stabilized shields because it's, I mean, it's a paragon. <laughs> Getting Turning 10% of its shield flux to soft flux is really good. And then the last one's going to be solar shielding. I think that's the direction we're going here. Yeah, I'll slap on the shock repeater on the tail. Perfect. Flawless. It's a beautiful design, really. I could wait for it to recover. So I could salvage all of these things, and then once it recovers, I could go blow up that station. Actually, yeah, I should just do that right now. Let's do that. Now I've got ten more. Expanded magazines for that one auto pulse. yes. Yes, we're going to do that. Actually, auto pulse. No, not auto pulse. Expanded magazines. S modded expanded magazines with the new. What do you want? Why do you count? That doesn't make sense. Why are you why are you bothering me? Stop it. This should be fine. Why are you preventing me from scavenging? You're you're, you're not even strong enough to fight me. Come on. So yeah, we're going to scavenge these, and then we're going to go take on that pirate base. Because at that point, the Paragon should be nice and repaired. Right, let's not engage like that. Wait, that has frontal shield conversion. I think that's the first time I've seen an enemy fleet or an NPC ship use, like, shield conversion. They never use it. Where? Oh, I'm still targeted on that. That's where they're going. My mistake. Let's get rid of this thing. All right, we, we need to hit it first. Do a little ramming damage. You'll love to see it. Yeah, flares are not going to save you from a dumb fire torpedo. You guys did not stand a chance. I don't know what you were thinking. Let me salvage. I know I don't want any of that. Thank you for offering, but I, I'll pass. Alright, let's get this before it floats away. Oh, I can salvage again. Interesting. And nothing. That must have been with their battle. That must have been salvaged from their battle with the remnants. Yeah, not gonna use that. Although the Centurion can be pretty good. The Centurion and the Lasher... They're not as good as... The problem is that they're just not as good as the Omen, but they can be pretty good. Alright, let's find out if this system is worth colonizing. Hmm, I am a little bit worried. Oh, you know what? I should have given the Paragon Auxiliary... The, uh, no. 
the augmented dry field. I should have done that. I forgot to do that. I'll do that when I get back. That's a lot. Okay, let's dump this. Don't eat that. What have we got here? So weather sucks. High gravity. Resources are pretty mediocre. It's not a good start. Other places are looking more favorable. But we do have a couple more to look at. Is that another debris field? There's a lot in this system. Maintaining contact. You guys want to get some? Because I'll give you some. It is not going to be pretty. You guys are just going to die. Alright, so let's mess up their... Well, yeah, let's get some topographic data and introduce false readings. Wait, if I'm introducing false readings, does the hack have any downsides or... No. I guess not. The false readings are for thee, not for me. That's the way it works. Okay. Let's dump some of this food. Yeah. Let's just, uh, let's do this. We're gonna, we don't... I mean, food, really? 2,000? Ah, all this extra cargo space. Y y the difference between having a very little cargo space and having a lot of cargo space isn't as big as it seems. Just because when you have a lot of cargo space, most of it ends up filled up with junk. When you have very little cargo space, you can fill it up with high quality stuff. Okay, so... Yeah, we're not... This isn't it. This ain't it. And so hopefully with the false readings we can get in on this station and nobody's gonna interfere. They're gonna be chasing ghosts. We can just, uh, well, first of all, we're going to sell our shit, and then we're going to blow them up. Oh, are they coming in at just the right time to defend? Oh, no, they're not. They're late. This is going to be great. Here, you can have all this. Here you go, guys. I know you're short on supplies. I'm just here to help. I'm just a, I'm a, I'm such a helpful guy. I'm such a helpful guy. You're welcome, by the way. Just grab a hundred. Oh, I'm gonna learn their blueprints while I'm at it. Learn their learn their blueprints right in front of them. Oh wow, the fuel's actually not super expensive. Okay, and we even get money for blowing these guys up. Although first off, first things first, dry field. That's what I want. We can drop that. Get that up to twenty. There we go. This should be fine. Okay. Now we're going to blow you up. We can leave you at home. I'm worried about you. Yeah, in this battle. Mostly want to let the Paragon do the tanking here. Well, bringing omens is... Man, omens are crazy because they're so good at dueling other frigates because they're perfect accuracy but then the normal counter when your opponent has really good frigates is to s throw fighters at them but then omens counter those too because of the because of the way that they are they're designed to do that it's just kind of crazy how versatile they are I would probably still use them if they were 8 dp to be honest not as much though I would start using things like scarabs more because at that point you know, in the terms of, like, frigate 1v1ing capabilities, scarabs are definitely going to outperform them. But right now, they're also more expensive. And then they have less versatility, so... Really need that Paragon to come in here, because, uh... We're not built for tanking this. Ooh, that almost got the overload. If I'd gotten a little more damage first, that would have been great. Man, it is just spamming out these harpoons.
Does it have, like, it, like missile racks? Or, uh, the fast missile racks now? Did they add that or something? Like, what is going on here? Because, holy crap, I think I'm dead. This is different. This is... I don't remember it spamming this many salamanders. I was not prepared for that. I should have hugged closer to the omen so they could have protected me there. It's really unfortunate because I put S mods on this, so now I'm going to have to restore it, which is going to be expensive. I mean, I can afford that. It's just not efficient. Yeah, blow him up. Make him pay. Now, this should probably reduce a lot of those uh, pirates that we saw earlier. We saw a lot of pirates in the core worlds, which consequently means those system bounties will probably not get renewed. Not that I was doing them anyways. Yeah, once you get a your Paragon, very useful, as it turns out. Makes this a lot easier. It's only one demon, so I guess it's not the end of the world. It also kind of depends on what it is. So what did I get hit with? Erratic fuel injector. Reduces the zero flux boost by... Wow. The only combat penalty here is the reduced zero flux boost, which gets cancelled out by this. That's kind of funny. Although, th then, there's... I forgot about the, uh, the fact that it doubles the zero flux turn rate bonus. I actually forgot. It's not just the plus 10 speed. Yeah, look at this. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know, I forgot to change the CR. By the way, if you want to test something, do this. You can click on this, and this just changes it for the purposes of testing. Oh yeah, this thing handles really nicely. Okay, let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. We're going to go back over here. And then our next mission is going to be doing... Yeah, run. Little baby. <sighs> Crew training is probably the best pickup here. Although, field modulation might have helped a little bit in that situation. I think crew training. Because it's crew training. Although the officer skills, those are not going to be useful for a while. Given, the, given our officer situation, the fact that I can't find any, these are not going to be useful for a while. And best of the best... Also, the, the deployment bonus at the start, not very useful. I'm not building that many hull mods into my ships right now, because I don't have that many story points. So I'm just going to stop at those three. And now I'm going to go into... Well, going into tech might be good just to grab flux regulation and energy weapon mastery. Yeah, I'll probably do that next. And then once I've got that, then I'll start going into the red skills. And then once I've got that, then I can grab Neuralink and cybernetic augmentation. I think that's the level up plan. And then eventually I'm gonna respec out of this into something else. And you can tell the fleet's getting a little chunky because we're getting slowed down in these deep hyperspace. Whereas at the start, you're just flying through them like a ghost. Like they're not even there. Okay, so, yeah, we're just going to grab some fuel. I think I have enough crew. I can grab more crew now that I've got this thing, but don't really need it. It's a simple little adventure. I wonder if I would actually find anything using the neutrino detector in civilized space. Probably not. I assume there wouldn't be much to find. But I guess you never know. Those might be useful for my guy. But uh, uh, Storm Needler would be interesting to do on the on the ship, but I, I think the range would just be too close. I'm not that crazy. Right? S slapping S-modded expanded magazines with double Storm Needler here. That would be true insanity. D that would just be crazy. Okay, so I can give you... Harpoon pot here. Perfect. Sabo's here. Sabo's here. Ooh, that's nice. Okay. Now this is kind of making sense. 
Alright, for you... No, we're still going to be dealing with that. That's fine. I would rather do burst PDs than regular PDs, but we'll just deal with that for now. Hey, look at that. I've got a heavy blaster now. This is going to make life a little bit easier, although... Flux costs are a little crazy. That's going to get easier. Well, first of all, it gets easier once you can change it over to a cryoblaster, but unfortunately that's going to... That's going to take a long time before I get to that. It drops it from 720 to 500 a second. That's a big improvement. And then it's also going to improve once I grab this. And this. Which is why I'm going to go for them next. Okay. So we want... Fuel, really. Yeah, I'm just going to sell a bunch of crap. We're going to buy a bunch of fuel. Yama. I want to be at... Yeah, I want to be over here. This is where the fuel is. I believe Nanchiketa is where they produce their fuel. In the hegemony. Probably not going to need phase anchor. I'll just wait till I get that from somewhere. Hey, hold on. Did I get... Yeah, I did put a save there. Okay. Officer. A mercenary. Not really what I'm looking for. Oh, and of course, the mercenary. They've added templates, but I don't. I guess the templates haven't been applied to mercenaries. Maybe that's something we could suggest. Because uh, the classic combo. I mean, there are some ships where that can work for sure. But that's not very common. Honestly, not too bad for... Like, if you just consider it a five-skill officer, just... Forget energy weapon mastery. Ballistic mastery plus gunnery implants plus target analysis. Okay. We got range and damage. That's really good. Ordnance expertise so you can fire the guns and helmsmanship. That's not bad. And then you throw in energy weapon mastery as a little bonus. So, you know, for maybe some midline ships, that wouldn't be bad. I'm not hiring him, though. I'm not spending a story point on that. Not right now. Okay. We're just going to buy a bunch of fuel. Oh, even the black market has a lot. That's how you know this place makes fuel. They've got a synchrotron core. Yeah, I've heard people talk about stealing the one from Syndria. That seems a bit pointless, though. If you're going to steal a synchrotron core, it's a hell of a lot easier to steal it here. Because I tried stealing the one from Syndria, and it took like 4,000 marines with a bunch of uh, a bunch of ships that boost overall fleet, uh, you know, rating combat effectiveness. It was ridiculous. This, much easier to take, even if there's a military base. Wait. Midline? What? The Hegemony has a midline battle station. Now that's the biggest surprise today. Alright, I'm going to need more supplies while I'm out there. Let's go up to like 600. Let's just get a lot. Okay. Oh, now that I've got a Paragon, my range is a lot shorter. Domain era survey ship. Salvageable cash. Yeah, okay. I'm going to need to buy more fuel range, which... Maybe I can grab a Prometheus. What have you got for your demod? What is it? Increased maintenance. That's not the end of the world. I'll grab this, and I think I'll just scrap these, because I really I really doubt that I'm going to need these now. Actually, do I need this? No. Now that I've got the Paragon, I don't need this. Scrap all of that. Just cut down. Okay, I'm going to need this. I'm going to want to build that. Wait, hold on. What have I done with you? Yeah, I built in the efficiency overhaul. That's what I did. For you, I'm going to build in solar shielding first. And we're going to slap on efficiency overhaul. Yeah, the Prometheus is an interesting ship. It's the same deployment points as a hammerhead. But with it's got all these weapon mounts, and you can slap on a, a capital-grade targeting unit. You've got 12... Like, the same deployment points as a hammerhead with 1,200 armor and, and 10,000 hull. 
you've got a lot of ballistic mounts, and you have a crew, you have a capital grade targeting unit. The main problem with this thing is that you have to spend a lot for your you have to spend capital level ordnance points for your hull mods. That's the only real problem it has with combat. But then again, if you just pick three S mods that you need, and right, well, three mods with hull mods that you need, and you S mod them, then you kind of bypass the cost of them, and you put all of your points into the vents and caps that you need, and you know, slap on a bunch of guns. For ten deployment points, it can perform pretty well, especially with the new escort package, which is really interesting. Right, you can because the, you can put you could actually have hammerheads. And Prometheus as your main like combat fleet, right? Where the Hammerheads all have escort package, and they just hang around the Prometheuses that you deploy. It's an interesting possibility. Okay. So now I need to buy more fuel. a lot of money all right that's what I like to see okay right and I grabbed those gauss cannons because I was thinking this would make more sense I mean it's still not ever going to afford that but it makes more sense I'm not even going to be really using this thing for now I haven't used the this ship too much so I'm not confident that I could build it in a way that makes sense. I am, I'm, it's so fragile that I'm definitely... It's going to give me anxiety. What can I say? Okay. I think that's really all we need. We're just going to head out there now. Yeah, yeah, scan me, whatever. Are we still at war with Tritachion? That would be... That would be a bit of a pain. I don't like that. Because I want to hit... I want to hit them up. I want to give them some AI cores. Get some more cash. And then I want to find out if they've got more weapons for me that I can put on my Paragon. I guess I'll go to one of their more isolated franchise establishments. Like the Port Say franchise or to Scathy. And hopefully I can just sneak up on them. With my transponder off. Out of all the main major factions, Tritachion I think is the only one that still lets you use the open market even with your transponder off. Okay, so yeah, they're they're here. Yep. They definitely don't like me. I don't know with now that my fleet's gotten a lot bigger, I'm not sure I can actually do this. Yeah, even going dark we're 690. Do I have to do do I really No, the sense the sensor ray is controlled by the hegemony anyway, so I can't use that to do this. Maybe I'll just emergency burn if they if they spot me. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, as simple as that. It's as simple as that. Just emergency burn. You just I, I I like to imagine what that's like for the crew here. Like the people at the dock, just like oh my god, they're burning in. Are they gonna crash it? No, no, they're just buying shit. Okay. Yeah, no, it doesn't look like. No, this is this sucks. That's unfortunate. That is unfortunate. Yeah, they're not even harassing me about my transponder off. That's how scared they are. Okay. So, do you guys have officers? Please. Please. Nope. Maybe they should up the spawn rate for those a little bit. I think I'm going to suggest that because it's getting a little annoying. Oh, and there's a... What? Well, I mean, I've got to buy that, right? Even if I'm not planning to use it. There's another... Oh, wait, there was another Falcon 14 that I could have that I could have salvaged, but it would have required a story point, and I passed up on that. That's right. But this for, for no D-mods. Yeah. Mm, for... They're a rare opportunity, but A, I'm probably not going to be including that in my fleet. And B, 
I need the money because I'm about to start a colony. So I'm going to have to restrain myself here. Even though it is a very pretty ship. I'm going to have to pass. So, do you guys have officers? I hope so. I really, really hope so. This, this is the hunt for officers. This is a, this is a skillless land. Nobody has any skills. There is one. What can you do? Ballistic mastery. I'm pretty sure I don't need that. I'm going to hire you, and I'm going to fire you. Bye-bye. Actually, you know what? You can stick around for... Uh, cautious, though? Eh, whatever. I'll stick you on there just so that you can activate Wolfpack Tactics. <sighs> okay. This is a little ridiculous. You know, I'd forgive it. I'd forgive the scarcity if I was finding some of the level 7 officers. But I'm not. You know, sometimes you find a couple of them pretty early on, and sometimes you just never do. They are a rare commodity. Yeah, we're going to go do these missions. We're going to start up a colony. And that's, I think, where I'm going to call it. And then the next, after this, we're going to be looking forward to whatever it is the sector decides to throw at us. Because it ain't going to be pretty. But I'm pretty confident we can handle it. I've got most of the skills that I need. I've got most of the ships that I need. And it's scale... Like, they're not going to do anything when it's only size 3. It mostly starts once you get up to size 4 with your colony. And that's going to be a little difficult this far out. And that's kind of in the wrong direction. I think I'll pass. Actually, I can use a neutrino detector to find the nearest slipstream. And if it's going the wrong way, that's still further up. Yeah, I guess I'll have to pass. And if I, even if it's going the wrong way, I have reverse polarity, which I've unlocked, and I still haven't actually had to use it yet. Well, I unlocked it because on the way back, and I haven't gone out anywhere. That's why. Archimedes' last stand. Nope, don't capitalize that A. Last stand. That's kind of cool. Ah, uh, no, I'll pass. What, do I still have this much fuel range? Perfect. Gotta love bulk transport. Gotta love Prometheus. You know how, Do you know how many planets I could saturation bombardment with this much fuel? We're up at 5,000. Okay, so I'm going to exp wait, where is it? Alright, what are we looking at? It's going to be some located in a ring system. Alright, alright. I gotcha. Scan this. 110? Sure. So it's going to be orbiting one of these things. It could be a little bit ignoring exploring nebulas just because everything's so far apart. But you can always, if you don't mind spending a little extra fuel, you can jump through the jump points. Automated defenses, you say? Well, that's a lot less scary, now that I've got everything that I need. Although, to be, I mean, this one I could have handled even with just the five omens I had at the start, really. It's more when you start seeing the, the big boys that you get a little scared. The cruiser sized. Speaking of which, there's a few things I'm gonna have to clear out in the outer in the outer sector. Oh yeah, just run away, that's fine. We're not worried about it. Omens will clean that up. Bye bye. Let's get that zero flux boost. Yeah. 
boom. Beautiful. And we got another Gamma Core. Very cool. Got another Raspberry Pi. Alright, we're going to clean out the system. So I think I'm going to go here, here, here. And then I'll transverse jump over there. Maybe I should explode this asteroid field, but I don't really want to. They usually don't have anything. They sometimes do, but I'm not going to spend the extra time going and looking for that. Uh, these uh, surveys are getting a little expensive. I probably won't survey the big boys. To make sure I, I can buy supplies at Sentinel, which is going to be close to home, so that's nice. Uh, but let's not push our luck too much. Also until both this little guy though. Alright. What are we looking at? We're getting pretty close to that hyperfield optimization. That's pretty nice. It's funny how you get the one for colonies so early on. Like before you really should be starting a colony. I mean that that had to be on purpose. Like, uh, we're gonna delay the one that's always useful, hyperfield optimization, and instead give you the one that you're supposed to actually get later on first. Just specifically to be inconvenient. We're gonna do that on purpose. Like it has to be the case. There we go. Okay, yeah, no, I don't have to. Some, you, you do have to check because sometimes you've got to clean out some... Some scavenger has picked up the probe and you've got to go to the... I mean, I clicked through those before thinking that I just could just go back and didn't read it. And then it ended up that I needed to actually go near a jump point to find scavengers who had it. And I only realized that after getting back to Galatia. Yeah, I'd rather not repeat that. I've done that enough. All these little rocks, because we're in the ring system. And I missed. A little out of practice. Just get rid of you real quick. real quick. I like how I some people have complained about how elite helmsmanship changes the game because normally you want to vent immediately after killing something. But with elite helmsmanship you actually just want to turn your shield off and start driving to your next target. Some people have complained about how it changes the game, but I think I've said it before and I'll say it again. I really like it. I think it's a cool mechanic. Or you you get that zero flux boost as long as you're not generating any. I think it's a pretty interesting mechanic. Especially for a lot of hit and run. Like, th there's a lot of ships where it just doesn't matter. It doesn't really do anything. But there's a lot of, like, especially the hit and run type ships. Where you... What? Where were those aiming? I was pointing at the target. What? Okay. Well, anyways, especially the hit-and-run ships. Come on. I tried to click that when I was boosting. Because uh, you can, you can you know, fire off your volley. And then when you're out of charges... Really? Really. I'm trying to talk here, and you're just dying for no reason. That's, that's disrespectful. Somebody court-martial that guy. Why would you do that? That... I'm, I'm flabbergasted. I'm bamboozled. I'm stunlocked. I'm at a loss for words. Why would you do that? I mean, repairing... Luckily, an omen is not going to be too expensive. It's going to be like 30k credits to fix that, but... I mean, it's 30k credits I'm spending for no reason. That was... That was just bad. That was just... That was just bad. Why? Why would you do this to me? I, I, I'm overcome with emotion. Okay, let's just move on. We're gonna forget that happened. Who, who was it, by the way? It was you. It was you. The cautious officer. 
It's like poetry. It rhymes. You know, I say, oh, you know, I'll keep you around. Even though... It, and, and then this happens. You know what? Just for that. Just for that. Goodbye. Yeah. I'm making my fleet worse just to make sure you learn your lesson. I'm also going to leave a negative review on Yelp. So good luck getting hired. I, I, I don't know if that's how that works, but I'm a... You know, space Yelp, I'm sure. Space... It, it, it's, there's, there's some kind of system in space. Oh, we've got space bitcoins. Surely there's some way to, to do that. I'm going to make sure you never get a career in these parts again. That was just embarrassing. You should be ashamed of yourself. Alright, so I do want to stop by here. Let's get a nice little repair. Yep, there's you just hanging out. And I can just, I can sell you crap. And there's nothing you can do about it. Oh no, suspicion? You guys don't have any patrols. You got nothing. You can't harass me and, and lower my reputation. How's it feel? Alright, I want to go to the cargo to grab all the stuff I left behind. What? No. Oh, that's interesting. So R, I was thinking R to take everything, but of course that goes to the refit screen. Thank goodness you can alt, because without, because you know that's not enabled by default, and without it, taking all that would be annoying. I'm gonna mothball both of you. I'm just taking you over to my new colony that I'm starting, and then I'm gonna abandon you there forever. I'm not gonna bother surveying that. Yeah, I think I'm going to start up the colony, and then the next... Right, first before we go. Let's not forget this. The I'm, I'm not going to do the mothership. I'm going to save that for the start of my next... Start of the next episode. Yep. We got something special, and now this fleet's going to be sitting here permanently. So the cool thing about these ships is obviously they come with a lot of demods that you can't restore and that does suck but then they also come with and they have like suboptimal s mods in some cases but even if you don't have best of the best some of them have three s mods and these ai ships don't need the ai ship skill so you're getting right one of the limited resources you have is officers so this kind of this is normally you break the officer limit using player skills like automated ships or officer management or support doctrine kind of breaks the limits in its own way but these ships let you break that limit without using any skills because you can just include them in their fleet you get to set right the the big ones have alpha cores you can set them to whatever skills you want so even if it's got those demons that you can't remove and it's suboptimal it still lets you power up your fleet in a way that you couldn't otherwise why am I down to nine? All oh, right, because of these things. Yeah, you've got a base of eight. That's right. Okay, so we're gonna scan that. We're gonna go establish the colony, and then we're gonna call it a day. And then the next, the very first thing we're doing next time is we're gonna hit that mothership. It should be pretty quick and easy, and hopefully it gives me something nice for the colony I'm starting. I have another save file where I found, where by this stage of the game, well, I'm actually, I'm actually not quite, I'm, at, I'm not as far into the game as I am here, but I found two fullerene spools, soil nanites, two corrupted nanoforges. I found like the perfect planet for setting up for farms. It's just ridiculous. Okay, I don't want to spend too much time dilly dallying. I'm in the wrong system. Oops. Probably explore all these systems later. Don't want to do that right now. It gets a little tedious if you do it all at once. I've tried, I've definitely tried going through the entire sector and, and scanning every planet. I, it was not worth it. Alright, what do you have to say? Oh, that's it? That's, that's all you want? Okay. I don't think... Yeah, 10%? Sure, I'll take that. Yeah, I really don't think... Oh, we even spawned the, the, the battle points. Cool. I don't think this is going to go very well for you guys. I really, really don't.
let's try and this is part of why I mean when the with the ability to S mod built in hall mods came out this this just made omens even better because you get so much right they're great for capturing the points because they're fast and then also they give you extra vision range so you can see what the enemy you get a better idea of what the enemy's doing normally you would not be able to see this this capture point from here but because of the the fact that I've S modded their their built in sensor things they're just even better And they're so small that this chain guns don't even know what to do. Look at that. I don't know why the omen's not using its, uh, its system, though. It's a bit weird. Okay, so we're probably going to just avoid that. Yeah. We want to avoid that. You can go after that. And then the omen should just pick off a lot of the frigates pretty easily. I'm gonna try to launch them. Die. You're being annoying. Gotcha. Alright, so you've already killed that. That's pretty cool. Let's get that going. Don't want you to get flanked and destroyed. Uh, yeah. It's looking pretty good. My flux is crazy. Ah, damn. Overload ended. That's a pain. Yeah, my flux is pretty crazy. Yeah, you're fine. You've got this. Everything is under control. Paragons, ladies and gentlemen, are really... Well, I mean, capital ships generally are pretty good. That's what they're... If they weren't, that would be concerning. I think at this stage of the game, it would be a bit harder to use something like the Conquest, which gets really good with... You know, the right setup, of course. I think I've demonstrated that pretty clearly. But even without all the right bells and whistles, uh, a Paragon's going to serve you pretty well at this stage of the game. Right, help me. Kill. Destroy. left. We've got this boy and this boy. So we can drop these orders. Perfect. That's what I like to see. And then I'm gonna... I'm just gonna go on autopilot because I don't think I'm gonna get there in time. I really shouldn't. I would be concerned if I got there in time. That would mean that they're not performing very well. With four of them? It should just be over. Yeah. There it is. Bye-bye. Yeah, I don't know what you're thinking. 10%? Mm-mm. We lost one crew. I'm gonna pursue them. Screw those guys. You know, it'd be really nice... I've got them set to group one. It'd be nice if I could just click one here in the pursuit phase. I should have remembered to add that as a suggestion on the forums. Being able to use hotkeys to just click one, automatically select all my frigates. That would be great. Bye bye. Alright, let's survey this, and then we're gonna go start up our colony, and then I'm gonna have to start planning because. Well, I guess I can't really plan too much until I figure out which crisis is going to be coming first. Or I could maybe even keep my crisis meter down enough that it's not an issue. There's a lot of things that could happen. Alright, so planet that I want is... This guy. 
right here. That's cool. Damn, I might have enough supplies, though. I'm starting to be a little concerned about it. Alright. Uh, yeah, let's just... No, nobody needs repairs right now, anyways. It's fine. And if I need more supplies, I'll just head over to Sentinel and buy some more. That's part of the advantage of being so close. Well, not super close, but close enough to them. Right, of course. Okay. Yeah, let's just establish I need 200, of course. And we're gonna get it. We're gonna get them. We're gonna get our two. We are so gonna get our 200. Uh, maybe I should pilot this. If I transfer into it, is that a good idea? Or I could deploy this. Yeah, you know what? I can kill them. And then what I'll do is I'll immediately turn off repairs because we don't need to do that. I'll start up the colony and then I'll run over with my tail between my legs over to Sentinel. Please give me supplies. I really need them really, really badly. And then everything's going to be fine. Right, let's get some EMP on this guy. Okay, that's a little concerning. Okay, so that should take some heat off of the sunder, because we don't want it to just die. Please shoot those down, that's going to be annoying. No thanks, don't want to deal with any of that. Okay. Yeah, you've got all their attention. They've cleaned up all the frigates. And now the two of us can take this thing out, and then we'll go finish off the other one. It'll be that easy. Okay. Yep, we're looking good. The Owens are already bullying one of them. Turn on your shields. What are you doing? You're, you're at zero flux. Don't just take those mortar shots for no reason. Machine guns. Interesting. All right. Yeah. So they're they they win against these things, but as you can see. Even with antimatter blasters, it's going to take a while. You can expect it to take, they're going to take their sweet time with it. So having something that brings some heavier guns, like the Sunder, to speed things up, can make a big difference, especially against the Mothership when there's going to be a lot of them. Although, to be fair, if you get to the Mothership early enough before you kill too many survey ships, its defenses are pretty light. Which they're not going to be because of how many I've killed, but... uh. But, it, you know, depending on it, if you can get to it early enough, it can be pretty light. All right. I think we're going to call this the uh, Thunder Lord's Sky Throne. Because, obviously, that is Paul Bingus. He is the Thunder Lord now. Bing... <laughs> I think we're just going to call this the Bingus Domain. It's the tr This is the true successor to the Domain. 
the Bingus Domain is a Bingus Domain courier ship reports that after right and of course call sign Bing no yeah let's just go cap all caps Bing um, yeah a lot of these some of these are kind of cool but a lot of them are not great uh, let's go with the eagle let's go with the eagle we're an eagle there we go all right growth negative so it's going to stay well I mean that's before this is even finished accessibility negative 50 ladies and gentlemen I think that this is going to be a very profitable adventure let's get farming started and then we're going to queue up right of course you can't queue that up until this is this is finished all right will this succeed or are we screwed uh, I guess well, hold on hold on let me just dump these here let me drop off all of this beautiful I'm gonna have to do something with that but there we go all right are we screwed or is this the beginning of a beautiful empire uh, find out next time on Dragon Ball Z so yeah that's about it see ya